Welcome everyone to another week of Ramban Allah Parsha. This week we have the great Zchos to read Parshat Ekev. I say this week, I should be honest with you, we're filming this before Tisha B'Av, and so, you know, Iranian attacks and what may or may not come, and, you know, I, I don't know. God willing, everything will be great, and God willing, people will be in a joyous mood when they, when they hear this year. Akev, I, I suppose, Bigadol is about the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. And even though there's no Rambana, I don't want to talk about the Rambana, this Vaya Akev Tishmun Et Hamishpatim Oelu Shmatem Vasitem Otam. And if you keep the Torah, then what? Vishama Hashem Al Kecha Lacha Tabrit Vetachesa Shenishba Lavotacha. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will repay you with all good things and with the covenant that he promised to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. And so the, the Rambans I want to do, mostly focused on the beginning of the parsha, relate to, to our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, specifically and generally. And if we start at the beginning of Parakhet, so says the Torah as follows, Kol HaMitzvah, it's a strange phrase, Kol HaMitzvah, Asher Nochim Mitzavcha Hayom Tishmurun La'asot, so Kodesh Baruch says, no, you should remember the 40 years where God did these things to afflict you. That we're going to have to discuss with the Ramban. Finally, he afflicted you. He fed you man that you didn't know and your forefathers didn't know. To teach you that it's not the physical stuff that keeps you alive, it's Pi Hashem, it's God's words and, and God's fulfillment of His promise to us. So says the Ramban in Pasuk Bet, V'zachartot kol aderech, Yomar, Ki tuchal ladat sheyesh ba'asiyat ha-mitzvot tova shleima, v'lo yiyet tzadik ne'azav u'mvakesh lachem. The first thing says the Ramban is you should know, if you keep the Torah, if you keep the mitzvot, HaKadosh Baruch is going to be good for you. And it won't be, like David HaMelech says, we say at the end of benching, you won't be a tzadik ne'azav, and mevakesh lachem. You won't be in need. HaKadosh Baruch will take care of you. Ki Hashem pirnes otcha b'amidbar b'maasei nes gadol ba'avur lech techa achar mitzvotav u'kvar perashtiv b'parashat haman. Says the Ramban, the, 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 the nisayon of the midbar was exactly that. Forty years in the midbar, away from civilization, away from any natural source of support, of food or water, and God supported us. That was God's test of us. Says the Ramban, the Nisayon of the Man wasn't just that we had no other form of support. It was that the rules were you couldn't leave anything over. And so at the end of the day, when you went to sleep, your cupboard was bare. There was nothing for tomorrow. If a miracle didn't occur, if God was not motzi lechem min hashamayim tomorrow morning, you would starve, you and your family. That's a big nisayon. And, and I often think to myself, you know, my grandfather is a colonel of Racha. I don't, you know, he was frumer than me, but I don't think he was a bigger talmud chacham. I'm not bragging or anything. I, I just, I don't, I. I, I think if you live at a time where, you know, a hundred years ago, with Jews forgetting persecution, when you, when you went to work in the morning, there was a chance your, your kids would get smallpox. There was risks all the time. 
and you lived with an awareness that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't help you, you weren't going to survive. When you went to sleep at night, if you didn't have a successful dead business tomorrow, you wouldn't survive. It was as simple as that. And I think that more than anything the Ramban says causes people to live with an awareness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that I mean, I'm sorry to say we don't live with. Now, I don't want to live that way. It's true. I, I like this self-confidence and I, I feel comfortable going to sleep knowing that there's food for tomorrow, that my family is going to be okay. But there's something religious about not knowing that. There's something religious about knowing that, you know, without HaKadosh, without HaKadosh Baruch Hu's help, I'm not going to be able to pay my mortgage. Without HaKadosh Baruch Hu's help, I'm not going to be able to pay for the Makola tomorrow. Right? It, it's not a way you want to live. But it's an enormous lesson and it's enormous awareness that I live through the grace of HaKadosh Baruch And the Ramban says, that was the secret of the man. The secret of the man was you couldn't leave anything over for tomorrow. The secret of the man was if it didn't rain bread tomorrow morning, your family was going to starve and you went to sleep with that feeling. And I just, my sense is, you know, it was hard to do Averos. If you were that God dependent, if you lived for 40 years, now at some point, okay, it's been raining bread every single day. I believe it'll rain bread tomorrow, but still there's at least an awareness that if man doesn't fall from the heavens tomorrow, my family's not going to eat. Okay, and so says the Raman, then v'cham Hashem it's going to melt. V'yir avu elav ma'od. Right, you don't think of this. They, they starve for it. They were desperate for the man. And God did the miracle because we kept the Torah. God could have took them near civilization. He could have took them near places where they could have bought food. But he took them away from all civilizations to teach them that if they keep his mitzvos, that's all they need. HaKadosh Baruch will support them. And if they don't, God forbid, then the reverse. So that's the first nisayon of the man. The first nisayon of the man is that the rules were such that you could not leave anything over till tomorrow except for Friday when you got a double portion. But otherwise, if God literally did not make a miracle every single morning, you would starve. Okay, that's the first point. Now the Ramban in the next passage goes Right? What does it mean that God made a miracle with the man and it was a miracle that the Avot didn't experience and didn't know? Says the Ramban. First of all, no one had ever seen it before. So no one had any de- and no one had no one had any confidence that this was something that could sustain them for an extended period of time. They had simply never seen it before. More importantly, None of the Avos had ever passed down Bik Kabbalah that this is how it's going to work, that man is going to fall from Shemaim and could support us. O Yomar, another possibility, Ki asa imachem ha-chesed ha-gadol ha-zeh ha-shavotechem ha-kdoshim lo higia elav, lo higio elav. That God is making a miracle for us in the Midbar that Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov were not zochet to. Ki afal pi shalchu acharav ki chol ha-shet for example, Lech Lecha Me'aretz Chom Yimalat Chom Be'it Avicha, even though the Avos kept the Torah and followed HaKadosh Baruch Hu in, in every single thing that he said, Lo Higia Ma'alatam, they never reached the level She'yifarnes B'dagan Shamayim Kasher HaSalacha. Moshe is telling them, for all that the Avos were great, and for all that the Avos kept the Torah, they were never Zoha to the miracle that you're being Zoha to right now. And what miracle is that? That Degan Shamayim, that heavenly, you know, in, in, in Hebrew, in Israel, like Degan is breakfast cereal, right? That heavenly Cheerios support them every single day. Here's the Medrash. Bizchut Moshe 
Heyitem ochlim haman, ma shelo ra'u avotecha akdoshim, shenema velo yadun avotecha, u piresh, ki asa ze lahodiam, ki hu ha mechaye ha adam bechol ashe yigzar, im kein shimor mitzvotav vechye. HaKadosh Baruch is telling them it's not just the reward, it's the message. And this is really kind of the message of the whole parsha. If you keep the Torah, HaKadosh Baruch is going to take care of you. And God forbid the reverse. And to, to teach people that HaKadosh Baruch spent 40 years making the same miracle every single morning for Klal Yisrael to support them. One, because they kept the Torah. And two, to teach them the lesson that if you do that, then it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu that's going to support you. And God forbid if you don't, then He won't. And it's such a significant message. Now, is the Ramban saying that Kla Yisrael and the Midbar were better than the Avos? I don't think so, even though it kind of sounds that way. I, don't th- I can't imagine that that's the point the Ramban's trying to make. I think if Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov needed man, God would have made that miracle for them. The point of the Ramban is that God didn't need to make the miracle for them, so he didn't. And the first time man ever fell was in the Midbar. And the Jews didn't know what to make of it. And they didn't know what to think. And they weren't confident that it could support them, as it did. And so there could not be a more direct message from HaKadosh Baruch Hu of if X, then Y, then the man. If you keep the Torah, I will literally support you. Not help you, but literally support you, and you won't have to do anything. Now, maybe that's not going to happen ever again in the world, but the message is clear. Keep the Torah, and our Kaddish Baruch Hu will be there for us in a, way that we, it's in a way that really we don't experience, but we understand intellectually from the story of this week's parsha. Okay. From there, it makes complete sense to move on a few psukim and, and go to our world. Pasuk Yud in Perak Chet tells us as follows. I'll start before that. Pasuk Chet. Eretz asher lo b'miskenu tocha ba'lechem lo techsar kol ba. Right, the psukim are talking about Eretz Yisrael. Eretz asher avonea barzel umeharea tachsov nechoshes. And not withstanding that, the source for benching. So what's going on? The simple pshat of the pasuk, I have to say, doesn't sound like a mitzvah of benching. The simple pshat of the pasuk sounds like some type of nevuah, right? It'll all be great, and God will feel you, will 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 satiate you. And then you'll bless Hakadosh Baruch Hu in the land of Israel, which somehow sounds like if there's a mitzvah of benching here, it should be a mitzvah hatlui of Aretz. Maybe it only applies in Eretz Yisrael. So says the Ramban. Vita, um, wait, says the Ramban. Ramban. You will remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and you'll also remember the story we just told about the man and the affliction in the Midbar. And when you enter the land and you feel satiated, and here I, I really think satiated has a deeper meaning than just, you know, I feel good. Satiated means I feel good and I feel confident. I feel like I have stuff in my cupboard. I feel like I have crops growing outside. I don't have to rely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a good way. I feel like HaKadosh Baruch Hu is supporting me and it's all going to be fine. Satiated is not, you know, when you finish a meal, if there's nothing left to eat, then naturally you start worrying about breakfast if you have a big supper. But if you have a big supper and you look out your window and you see your fields and you see the crops growing, and you know that you have breakfast tomorrow, you feel much better. The Rabotenu Kiblu, Shezo Mitzvah Tasei. Right, it sounds like the Ramban is saying in the Pasuk, it's hard to see. What do you do? But Chazal said, 
This is the marker for the mitzvah sase of benching. Vita'amo utivarech et Hashem alokecha. Right? V'yachal tov svata uveirachta Hashem alokecha. It seems like the wrong word, says the Raman. It should have been V'yachal tov svata uveam. So he says, yes, you have to read it that way. The same way as Okay, that's one point. Just the technical instead of says the Ramban, they're interchangeable here. And that's the, that's the commandment to do the mitzvah benching. But now what about the fact al which really sounds like you're supposed to bench in Eretz Yisrael and only in Eretz Yisrael. So says the Rabban, I, I see that. V'tam al ha'aretz ha'tova kimo v'al ha'aretz ha'tova. It's not limited to doing it when you're in the land of Israel, but when you do it, you're supposed to also bless the land of Israel. One, two, Says the Raman, I'm not saying you can't be satiated in Krakow or in the five towns or in South Africa or in Australia. Of course you can. And you have to thank God for that. But the main thanks to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the main dream of Jews is Al Ha'aretz HaTova. There's a different feeling of this Savata, there's a different feeling of satiety when you're in Chutz Laaretz than when you're in Eretz Yisrael. When you're in Eretz Yisrael and you feel satisfied after a meal and you look outside and you see all the crops growing and you see the bounty that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's given you, and it's much easier to see it in Eretz Yisrael than it is to see it in Chutz Laaretz. That's a special mitzvah. And so says the Ramban, obviously it applies all over. It's not a mitzvah to Yob Aretz. But even if you're in San Francisco, you're supposed to bless as part of benching Ala Aretz HaTova. The theme of Eretz Yisrael is dominant in benching. He says the Ramban, the very last five words, V'hinei chiyuv ha-mitzvah zot b'chal makom. Halacha lemaisa, you have to bench wherever you are. But halacha lemaisa, you have to bench wherever you are and thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for Eretz Yisrael, wherever you are. And again, I think it, it relates back to the man in the way that the man, you never went to sleep feeling satisfied. That's the nisayon of the man. Okay, you had enough to eat, but you were worried about tomorrow. And somehow the idea of coming into Eretz Yisrael and living a natural life and seeing things grow and having springs and having waterfalls and having all the things that we have and that we need, it's a different type of satiety. It's a different type of sivia, and that requires a special thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, let's keep going in the parsha Again, the relationship with HaKadosh, between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and His people. And the Torah touches on a risk that we all face. Okay, on the one hand, But what's the risk? But at some point, if you live in the land of Israel and you grow crops and you do everything on your own, you're going to say, it's me. It's not HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And he warns us, So says the Ramban, the first thing, says the Raman, is, in fact, we are brave and we are warriors. That's a fact. Right? We're compared to animals in a good way. And Ze'ev Yitraf, that's who we are. 
Umalchei Kinan b'milchama nitzhu otam. We beat the Malchei Kinan in the war. Al Kein Amar. Im tachshov kochi v'otzem yadi asal yitachayil hazeh. If you ever have the feeling of, we're great. Wow, we're fantastic. We have the greatest army in the world. A feeling that was completely dominant in Israel after the Six-Day War. It really was. Tizkar Hashem shotziotcha mimitzrayim. V'lo hayalacha sham koach v'otzem yad klal. You'll remember Yitzias Mitzrayim, where it was not us. It was HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's true. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want to make miracles all the time. And so HaKadosh Baruch Hu made us brave, and He made us warriors, and it made it possible to look at miracles like the Six-Day War as if they weren't miracles, if they were coincidences, and look at miracles like the Yom Kippur War as if they weren't miracles, they were just coincidences. We have to think otherwise, says the Ramban. God gives us a choice. In the Midbar, we had no choice. That's why we couldn't leave any man over. We'd be forced to recognize that every day was a miracle. But now we live in Eretz Yisrael. Now we have a choice. You'll remember the Midbar. You'll remember no one could have claimed that it was them. I didn't bring the man down from heaven. No one could have. It was HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Asa l'chol kol tzarkecha. Right? Now that we have a choice, the Ramban says, remember back to Mitzrayim, remember back to the Midbar, when it was not us, it could not be us, we weren't strong enough, we didn't have the ability. God did everything. It's true. In some way, we may have won wars legitimately, but it's just removing God by some level. God made us warriors. God made our generals smart in the Six-Day War and the Yom Kippur War. God gave us the strategies so we could deny His role if we want. But it's our own risk. It's saying, That's wrong. Look at Mitzrayim. Look at the Midbar. Look at the Man. It's completely wrong. If you leave God, you're going to be destroyed. Right, the next Pasuk says, um, the next few psukim. Shema Yisrael Ata Uver Ayom Et Hayardin Lavol Areshet Goyim Gedolim Vatzumim Mcha Arim Gedolot Vitzrod Bashemayim. Right? Am Gadol V'Ram Kanakim. We're going to need God's help again. We're going to need God's support. And when we do that, when God gives us the strength to say to ourselves, Kochi V'Otsem Yadi Asoli Et Hachayel Hazeh, and we choose not to, and we think back to Mitzrayim, and we think back to the Midbar, and we say to ourselves, even though it looks like it's our strategy, and it's our weapons, and it's the Shabak, and it's all the things that we have going for us, we'll recognize that all of those are dependent on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the same way that we had no choice but to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu as doing everything for us in Mitzrayim, and in the Midbar, and particularly with the Man, We'll look at and see our lives in Eretz Yisrael now in the same way. Okay, one last um, Ramban. In the portion of Perek Tet, in which the Ramban goes back, I'm sorry, in which Moshe Rabbeinu goes back to tell highlights, not the whole story, but highlights of, uh, of Chet HaEgel, and he tells Baaloti Ahara la kaha luchota avanim luchota brita shekrata shem machem, va ishe baha arba im yomva arba im laila lechem lo achaltu maim lo shatiti. And God gave me the two luchot. And then we come to an interesting pasuk. Says the Torah, Vo et post bishneha luchot va ashle va ashli chem me al shteha me al shte yodai. I was holding the two luchot and I threw them down. Why? 
Um, and then So the Ramban doesn't think that we're talking about a complete recall and telling over the story of uh, of Chet HaEgel. So what's this doing here? So he says, Gam It's an insult to Klal Yisrael. It's not the story. Yomar. Haya avonechem gadol minaso. Ad ki biroti etchem misacha kim lifna egel. Lo yacholti lehitapeg. Right? The Ramban's going to give us two reasons for Moshe breaking the, the, the luchot. The first thing is I simply didn't have the self control. I looked and I saw you dancing and singing and partying with Avodah Zarah. I, I, lo yuchali tapek. I couldn't stop myself, so I did it. V'shavarti haluchot, v'hutzra. Okay, and I broke the luchos. V'hutzra lahazkir ze ba'avur she yirtze lahodiyam inyan haluchot hashniot kashei faresh. Okay, Moshe Rabbeinu had to mention, had to get to luchot shniot, so he said, okay, I had to break the first luchot and I had to break it because of you. It could be that Moshe Rabbeinu is hinting to the great goodness that he did for Klal Yisrael. You have to understand this. In retrospect, well, of course Moshe broke the luchos. But Moshe is carrying down the most valuable thing in the history of the world. Literally, God in his own handwriting has written the the the, the, es, the Asara, the Eser Dibrot, on two Luchot. And Moshe Rabbeinu willingly shatters them. Why did he do it? Because when he sees B'nai Yisrael breaking the covenant, he shatters the covenant such that it's almost like a ketubah, right? So you rip up a ketubah so you're not married uh, on some level. So the fact that your wife or you cheated on the other spouse, it's not like a married person cheated. It's like a pnuya cheated. It's not a good thing, but it's no longer an eshes ish. It's no longer a mamzer situation. It's no longer as tragic. So the Ramban gives, interestingly, in this week's parasha, two reasons why Moshe broke the Luchot. One is, he simply didn't have enough self-control to, to, to contain himself. Now, that's not really the case. Of course, Moshe had self-control. But he, he, he saw what was going on, and it was like almost a heroic thing. Well, we think, okay, Moshe, of course, broke the Luchot. No, he's saying it was, a, it was heroic action. Moshe didn't know. It's true. The Gemara in Shabbos says that God praised Moshe for breaking the Luchot. That was La'achar Maisa. When Moshe did it, he didn't know what God's reaction would be. So the first thing is, he was so upset that he did it. The second thing is much, much more as a plan. Moshe wanted Kla Yisrael to be able to say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know, we didn't have a covenant. Where's the Luchos? Where's the Ksuba? Prove to me that we had the relationship that you claim that I'm an Eishas Ish. I'm not an Eishas Ish, I'm, I'm a Pnuya. Okay, and so Moshe Rabbeinu achieved that as well. So we've seen today five, I guess, um, Rambans, all about the intimate relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The first one, the first two really dealing with the Inui in the Midbar, which could have been just, there wasn't any natural resources, but more likely, says the Ramban, was no, about the rules of the Man, and how you had to go to sleep hungry, not hungry, but you had to go to sleep every night, not knowing what breakfast was going to be. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to give it to you in an absolute miracle. And therefore, the the Ramban, that it looks like it's a nevuah, it looks like it's kind of a mitzvah, tluya ba'aretz. of course it's not, of course you have to bench everywhere, but when you put it together, right, the blessing of being in Eretz Yisrael, and the blessing of feeling satisfied, is not just momentary. It's the feeling that I can look and see the immediate future, and I don't need a miracle from God. I don't need a miracle for God, so maybe I'll say, Kochi v'otzam yadi asli yitachayel hazeh, says the Torah, God forbid. Don't say that. V'zachayta sashem alokecha. You'll remember the times where, of course, it was God. Mainly the man. It was an absolute miracle. Without that, we would have suffered. And therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you'll remember that, 
And finally, the last Ramban Vod post, Bishnei Luchot, two reasons why he shouted the Luchos. One, he was so upset he couldn't control himself. Two, no, he thought about it and he thought to himself, better that Bnei Yisrael are unmarried and cheated on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God forbid, than that they were married. That would be much, much worse. Okay, that's it for today. Yashkoch to everybody. Shabbat Shalom.